All right, we are in chapter three, and we're going to be working on um, exercise number eight, which is completing the rectangle area application that was created in the last chapter. So I have that open here. This is uh, the design of it. This is what we did in the last chapter. And let's get to it. So uh, this is just open it up, save it as something else. Um, I'm not going to worry about saving it as something else. I'm going to keep the same file. I'm just going to continue working on it. All right, enter the three option statements in the code editor window. So if I come back here, um, I'm done designing, so I'm going to unpin my toolbar. And with my uh, VB file selected, I'm going to hit F7 to get into the code editor. And the three option statements get added above the public class declaration. And they are option explicit on. Option explicit on will flag um, any undeclared variable. So I cannot use a variable before declaring it. Option infer on means that any variables that are declared must be declared with a type. And option strict on. Um, refers to uh, typecasting and when a value is converted from one to another. So, for example, you can convert an integer 4 to a decimal, 4.0, right? But you can't convert a decimal, 4.2, to an integer because it would lose some data. So that's what's going on here. These three statements are put at the front of our application. Okay, uh, one of the buttons in the interface should calculate and display the area in both square feet and square yards. Either use a flowchart or pseudocode. I'm going to use pseudocode to plan the button's click event. So if I go back to my designer, this is obviously going to be the calculate button. And I'm given a sub procedure that handles btn calculate.click. So what do I want to do? Well, I want to get the length, which is user input, and store in a decimal variable, get the width, which is also user input, and store in a decimal variable. And then I'm going to uh, create a variable that stores the square feet, which is length times width, and then create a variable that stores square yards, which is length over three times width over three. Let me just make sure this input here, this input is in feet. It doesn't say that there, but I think I remember that from last week. I could always go back to my Project planning chart. So here's my project planning chart for the area calculator. And the user provides length and width both measured in feet. Okay. So we've got that. Um, yeah, that's all we need to do for, for this bit. So this is my pseudocode. This is what I am going to do. And then within my pseudocode, I'm going to finish the actual coding. Give myself some room to work here. And then BIM deck length L E N G T A as decimal. So deck length is my variable to hold the length. And then what I want to do is I'm going to try to take in TXT length. That's my that TXT length is this box. And my input that I want is not this box, but rather it's the text property for this box. And if it works, where do I want to put this? I want to put it in deck length. All right, so this declares the variable for deck for the length. And then we try to take the user's input and convert it to a decimal and store it back there. All right, now I'm going to take these two lines, uh, copy them because for the width, it's going to be very similar just instead of length. I say width. Okay, so now we have the 
width and the length in two variables. Now I need to declare a variable that stores the square feet. So dim deck, let's say area feet as decimal is equal to deck width times deck length. Right? And then finally, I guess not finally, I guess I really didn't finish my pseudo coding. Um, deck area yards as decimal is equal to deck width divided by three times deck length divided by three. So by taking something in feet and dividing it by three, you get yards. You multiply the yards together, you get the area in yards. Okay. You cannot just take deck feet and um, deck area feet and divide it by three. That will not give you the yardage. Um, you could take this and divide it by nine because notice we divided by three twice. Um, okay. And then finally um, put the area, put the values of the area variables in the output labels. So what are these things called? This is LVL area feet. So I'm going to say LVL area feet dot text is equal to back area feet dot to string. I need to convert that to a string when I um, because deck area feet is a decimal, and I'm trying to put in a property that stores a string. And if we remember to string, let's take, um, could take arguments. And this is one that I'm going to have to look up. So I, I clicked on to string, I hit F1. That brings me to the dot not documentation. Remember, change this to VB. So our examples come in VB for us. Okay, and what we're trying to set is the format. All right. Um, so this takes a format. I'm trying to get some examples here because this format is standard numeric format strings. If we look at the exercise, display the amount with a comma and one decimal place. So we need to figure out how to do that here with strings. Well, we don't want currency, right? Because we don't want the dollar sign there. D is a decimal. Oh, that's what we want. I kind of want decimal, but I want, you know, a, a, the commas in there as well. Oh, here we go. N. Look at this. One, two, three, four, point five, six, seven gives me that. Can I do, I think I can do N1 will give me just one space. So we're gonna try that. I'm gonna try two string, and it's a capital or lower, it doesn't really matter, N1. But I don't know if that's gonna work. Um, we also have to set this thing to visible so we can actually see it, all right? And let's check this out, because like I said, I don't know if this is gonna work. We're learning as we go. I'm gonna do something simple, three by four, calculate 12.0. Okay, and then it'll give me 30 by 40, I want to see, good, it gave me that comma in there, all right? So that worked wonderfully. And, you know, if your exit button didn't work, um, go ahead and code that. You know that's me.close. All right, we're almost done with this bit. I'm just going to take this, copy, paste, and this is LBL area yards. That's the yards, and that's visible as well. All right, one more time. If I do 30 by 40. Oh, so I hit enter and nothing, it didn't do anything. It just yelled at me. All right, so I'm going to have to set the accept button on my form to calculate. Um, all right, that looks good. Let me go back and change that. So I have my form selected. My accept button is none. I'm going to set that to BTN calculate. And then my cancel button should be BTN exit. So now when I run it, I can hit 30, hit tab, 40, hit enter and my form calculates and then escape. All right, so we have a working application. Let's review this again. So enter the three, we did that. One of the buttons should display feet and yards. Yep, use a pseudocode. We did pseudocode and then code it. We did that using variables. Display it with one decimal place, comma, we did that. Save the solution test. Okay, so all of this is done. Let's look at where our application is now. If I do 30, 40, hit enter, that's great. 
But if I change this 40 to 50, these values are wrong, right? Because I haven't hit calculate yet. So what we want to do is whenever the user changes one of these, I want to clear these. All right, so let's, let's work on that. Code each text box, text change, and enter event procedures. So what we want to do is whenever one of these boxes change, like if this changes to 50, these labels should go away. All right, so that's what we're going to work on next. I'm going to handle the change first. I'm going to double click on length, and that gives me a sub procedure that handles when TXT length is changed. And when TXT length is changed, I want to take LBL area feet, the visible property, and set it to false. I'm going to do the same thing for yards. Okay, so this is only handling the length. Um, Oh, you know what? This should be false from the get-go too. I didn't notice that before. I don't know how I didn't notice that before. So 30, 40, great. Now when I take length and change it to 50, those go away because those values were no longer val valid. And now when I hit calculate, it resets the values and then makes them visible again. But if I change this, that hasn't updated this, all right? So there's two different ways we can do this. The one way is going to be with wet code, write everything twice. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to double click on with, and I'm going to take these things, copy it, paste. All right. And it, that would work just fine, but I'm repeating code. What if I want to do a third thing? I would have to do that here and then remember to do it here as well. All right. So this is how we can do this in the designer. If I choose this with element, and I come over to my properties. These are all the different properties for the width element. There's this fourth button here called events. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to look for text changed. And you can choose what happens when text changes. And what I want to do is the same thing that happens when the length text changes. All right. So I set that text change property txt length underscore text changed on the width input box. If we look at our code, what happened is this sub procedure will run whenever TXT length is changed or that's that comma, TXT width is changed. So now when I run this, I can put in 30, 40. When I change this 30 to 32, that was cleared out. And when I change the 40 to 41, that was cleared out. All right, the last thing I wanna do is when I click on either, either of these, I want um, that box to be selected. How I'm going to do this, I'm going to use a, a similar method um, getting on this events box here. So I click on length. I look for events in the properties. Okay, you were probably previously set to this properties button. Click on the events. And when the user enters that box, what do we want to do? So I'm going to just give this a name. I'm going to just say select all text. And this gives me a new sub procedure called select all text that handles when I enter txt length. But what I want to do here is txt length dot select all. Save that. Hit F5. So now when I put in 40, 50, I hit enter. That's what runs. Um, if I hit tab until I get to my length box, that 40 is selected. I have you know, 42. Notice if I hit tab and I'm on width, that was not selected. But if I, I'm going to do shift tab to go backwards, now 42 is selected. Okay. Um, so we're going to do then the same thing on the width. Width on enter. If I go back to my event here, enter. I want to say, txt uh, with select all. That is my name of my sub procedure. I like that better than select all text. I'm going to take this txt with select all, paste it up here and make this one length. All right. It just matches a little bit better. And then here I'm going to do txt length dot select all. Nope. txt with select all. When you enter the width text box, we're going to select everything. And when you enter the text, the length text box, we're going to select everything from there. 
doing this one more time. 30, 40, hit enter. Looks good. If I change this to 32, as soon as I change it, it goes away. As soon as I enter into the next one, it's automatically selected. So the only other thing I would do to this is that when you hit calculate, I would move the focus up to the length text box. So at the very end here, txt length dot, do we have a focus? We do. Hit save so that, that works. 30, 40, hit enter. And now my, my focus is already on length, so I can change that again. And I can keep working on this application. So move the user's focus back to the length in uh, text input. All right, let's take a look at this. So text change and enter, we did that. Uh, save and test, we did that. So as you know, take this application, make sure everything works, save it, zip it up and submit it.